Panasonic just announced that they will be manufacturing a new 4680 cell for Tesla. Let's discuss all the details about this announcement and also talk about why this makes a lot of sense for Tesla's future. I'm Jonathan and welcome to CleanerWatt. At Battery Day, Tesla revealed their new revolutionary Tabless 4680 battery cell. When combined with chemistry and manufacturing improvements, this cell will revolutionize EVs by drastically lowering the battery cost and greatly increasing the battery supply. Although at Battery Day, Tesla initially talked about their own production of the 4680 battery cells, they also made it very clear that they plan to continue with their battery partners like Panasonic, LG Chem, and CATL. Tesla needs these battery suppliers if they're going to be able to deliver a lofty 20 million cars per year by 2030 and also meet the energy storage demands of Tesla Energy. As I'll talk about later on in the video, just because Panasonic is going to be producing battery cells for Tesla in this new 4680 form factor, this does not necessarily mean that it's going to have the same battery chemistry that Tesla laid out at Battery Day, nor does it mean that it's going to be produced with the same dry battery electrode processes. In my opinion, and I'll talk about why, I believe Tesla is going to reserve some of this special sauce that they talked about at Battery Day for their own battery production lines, but yet they still need a lot of batteries, so they're going to allow partners like Panasonic, LG Chem, and possibly even CATL in the future use this format size and some of the tabless battery technology. So when you set aside the other manufacturing improvements and the chemistry improvements of the battery and just talk about the form factor alone as it compares to an improvement over the current 2170 cells found in the Model 3 and the Model Y, Tesla laid out at battery day that this cell form factor alone allows for a 16% range increase a 14% reduction in the cost per kilowatt hour, and also a 7% decrease in the investment needed per gigawatt hour. So my point here is that Panasonic can take the exact same chemistry and the technology they currently put in their 2170 cells at the Gigafactory in Nevada, and they can just put this in this new form factor, this 4680 form factor, and very quickly be producing these larger battery cells. Let's now dive into the Reuters article and talk about the details of this announcement. This article was published by Reuters on October 29th entitled Panasonic Beats Forecasts Developing New Battery Cell for Tesla. Quote, Panasonic Corp said on Thursday that it is working to develop a new battery cell for Tesla Incorporated based on the U.S. electric vehicle maker's new cell format as the Japanese company moves forward in its decade-old partnership with Tesla. The article went on to quote their chief financial officer saying, we started working on it immediately after Tesla's battery day in September and are also preparing to set up a prototype production line in parallel. As you might have noticed when I read that first quote, it talked about Panasonic creating a battery cell based on Tesla's 4680 battery. It didn't say they're going to do the exact carbon copy or they're going to take over production of that battery cell. It just said they're going to be building a battery based on. And I believe this is specifically referring to the cell format, the tabless cell format, and specifically this 4680 size. Also, when you dive into that statement from the chief financial officer of Panasonic, he specifically mentions that they're setting up a prototype line for this new battery. Because this line that Panasonic is building is a prototype line, this makes me believe that they're not going to be using the exact manufacturing techniques and exact chemistries that Tesla is going to be using in their own 4680 battery cells, but rather Panasonic is going to be using a similar chemistry and a similar manufacturing process to the current 2170 cells, only in this new form factor. It is important to note that the 4680 form factor is completely chemistry agnostic. It can be used in a nickel, cobalt, aluminum chemistry like Tesla currently uses for the 2170 cells and also the 18650 cells, but it can also be used with a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry and also a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. 
Tesla made it very clear that for their own in-house battery production, they're only going to be using the high nickel chemistries in these batteries. However, they laid out the plan to use some of these other chemistries in future vehicles. And we know in China, they're already using some of these chemistries, the lithium iron phosphate, and also the nickel manganese cobalt chemistries in some of those Model 3s and future Model Ys. As Tesla moves more and more of their vehicles to the structural battery pack that we learned about at Battery Day, that is going to be the underpinnings for the Model Y coming out of Berlin in a year or two. As they do that, they're going to need more of these 4680 battery cells, and they don't necessarily have to have the same exact chemistry as what Tesla is producing. As Tesla has shown in China, they're willing to use other chemistries in their cars as long as they can fit it in their vehicle. And I believe that's what will happen with this new 4680 cell. I predict Tesla will move over most of their vehicles over the coming years to that 4680 form factor. However, every single vehicle will not necessarily have the same chemistry. Some will have a, maybe an iron phosphate battery pack with the 4680 battery cell. Some will actually have a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry with that 4680 battery cell. And then others like the cyber truck and the semi truck that really need energy dense cells will definitely have the nickel cobalt aluminum chemistry that they currently use in in their 2170 and 18650 batteries. One of the big reasons why this new 4680 battery cell is so significant, even stripping it away from the chemistry improvements and the manufacturing improvements that we know Tesla will use in their own battery lines, is the simple fact that it has five times the energy per cell. Meaning that if Panasonic can produce the same amount of cells from a production line as they currently do with their 2170 cells, even if they produce the exact same number of cells, it'll mean five times the gigawatt hours or five times the kilowatt hours per production line because each cell has more energy stored in it. Also, when it comes to manufacturing the battery packs themselves, it's a lot faster to build a battery pack with the 4680 battery cells because there are way fewer of these cells needed to reach the 74 or 75 kilowatt hour battery pack that Tesla currently uses in the Model 3 and the Model Y. So in conclusion, Tesla is going to need all the battery cells that they can get. And this is good news that Panasonic is going to be producing at least a version of the 4680 cell for Tesla. And this will definitely help speed up the process and continue to reduce the cost of Tesla's electric vehicles. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing to the Cleaner Watt channel. And when you do subscribe, if you click the little bell icon to turn on notifications, YouTube will notify you when I put out new content. Here at the end of the video, I also wanted to thank my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you goes out to my performance supporters, Bradford Ferguson of Halter Ferguson Financial, Inku Kang, and also Laura Sanborn. It's with the support of these and my other Patreon supporters which make this content possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community and how you can support CleanerWatt, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.